Now, obviously, we know at the at the top of all of this, making these decisions and getting these weapons is Ryan Poles, right? So you've you've had a couple GMs. I don't know what two or three during your time on the Bears, right? Two. Oh, I got drafted by Phil Emery. Mm-hmm. I had Ryan oh, Pace, oh, okay. um, and then I had uh, Brett Veach. Yes, at three, right? So yeah. you've seen a couple. You've seen a good amount of G- three GMs is actually a, a a good amount, right? So based off the GMs that you had under while well, you were under the Bears. How do you view Ryan Poles as a GM from the outside or maybe from what you've heard from players and things like that? And how he's uh, I, I loved what he said today. I loved what he said today, bro. Like, finally, somebody who just says it. Like, we're going to go get a fucking quarterback because that's what we need. Like, no, he's pretty much like, no offense, you know? Uh, but we've got to get better here. And I remember when I was in Kansas City, he was in Kansas City. And we would lift in the same weight room. And I didn't realize who he was. I mean, we, you know, we shared pleasantries and he was clearly a former lineman. And, you know, we would chat about that. Or he'd be like, what do you see from 95 or what do you, you know, whatever. Yeah. (laughs) Quiet guy, always had his headphones in. He was going to work right after he finished working out. But he, he saw, he saw firsthand what the quarterback can do to a team. And what putting a guy like Keenan Allen out there can do for a team uh, and for a young quarterback and for somebody who's learning to get in rhythm and play on time and play in cadence, that's what you need. You need a tight end like Cole Komet, who you can throw to in the vertical game or uh, in the flat game, a heady tight end um, who can be, you know, pretty good in the run. And then you want to give yourself as many options to win in zone and man on the outside. And that's with DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, and whoever else we go after. I mean, I'd have to ask you guys, who are we going to go with at nine? I was actually going to ask you that, but um, I'm hoping they – I hope they stick on the offensive side, Kyle. Like, I know we've invested in the defense the last couple years. You know, Jaquan Brisker, Kyler Gordon. um, You obviously got Montez Sweat. I just feel like And it's paid dividends, but absolutely. And it could. I mean, Dallas Turner is interesting as far as edge. You could even go, you know, tackle – but for me, I'm just like, if any of these top receivers, I'm talking the top three, you know, Adunze, Harrison. Rome, Marvin, or Na- Napers, or uh, Neighbors. Yeah. And then um, I think you take one. But what are your thoughts on on that and also Brock Bowers? Like, there's been talk about that potentially with, you know, Shane Waldron and what he likes to do with 12 personnel. Is that – what do you think? Brock Bowers excites me. Um, it excites me a lot. And I think about the successful two tight end offenses – uh, in the National Football League, particularly with a heady quarterback with some arm talent, like you go up to New England and Aaron Hernandez and Gronk, that was a lot of fun to watch. Both guys are different archetypes, and I think Brock Bowers is a guy that can play X, Y, Z, H, or F, and um, the coaches love guys like that. Uh, they're all over the field. Travis is able to do a number of things in Kansas City, and it opens the playbook uh, for Andy Reid, and you know they get a guy like Noah Gray, who has kind of a, a been a stalwart guy for them, a bright dude. And I think you know you bring a guy like like Brock in, and it opens up the game for Cole Komet, and um, it's just another safety blanket. And I think about Sam Laporta in Detroit, and the, yeah. the immediate success that he had Dog. in the National Football. And it's got people going to see the best tight end in the league. Um, the tight end position so valuable because it's offensive line, it's the receiving game. Yeah. It's all tied in there. So that so, would be big. If you ha- – I'm going to put you on the spot here. Wh- who do you think – where do you think they go? You don't have to pick a player, but do you think they go receiver or, or what do you think happens? I Obviously, like Joe Alt a lot. Yeah? Um, I'm not sure what his availability is going to be, but I love the guy from Washington, the receiver, the most, in, right. in my opinion. Yeah, um, over like, Harrison? When you look at the cast of characters that he'll be joining – Mm. Um, there's not two guys on the Avengers who do the same thing. And I'm not saying anybody else does what Marvin Harrison Jr. does, but you're talking about archetypes. You want, yeah. um, you know, like I think about the receivers in Jacksonville and they're guys who are kind of playing out of position. Like they're all good like players, but they're all kind of doing the same thing. Uh, go get right. yourself a guy that does a thing that nobody else does. And that's being bigger and faster and stronger <laughs> and winning at the point of attack. And that's why I like Roma Dunze a lot at number nine. 
What a bar, though. We can't let that slide. No two people on the Avengers do the same thing. Like, come on now. You got to have different <laughs> shit, bro. You can't be. Yeah, that's my you. move. It's a Spider-Man meme. But. <laughs> yeah. No, that's fire. So, uh, we, no, uh, going back to the draft as well. I'm a big proponent of like the game is one in the trenches. I'm sure you could agree as a former lineman, right? So do you feel that the Bears trenches are good enough to go ahead and draft a wide receiver like that? Or do you think as Poles, who's a former offensive lineman, you a former offensive lineman yourself, you know how important it is to give your quarterback time. And then on the other side to get at the quarterback as quickly as possible. So do you, would you rather them approach the trenches first and just put a bunch of dogs there or if go you approach ahead and the get trenches, someone... go get the best center possible. Would you do it that early though at nine, like a Jackson yeah. powers Johnson? I think, I think a move like, I mean, yeah, I'm an O-lineman, so they're going to call me crazy regardless. I say some crazy shit, but <laughs> Creed Humphrey, um, the impact that he has on the offensive line in Kansas city and getting all three of those interior guys to be on the same page. Look, I'm not mad at the Braxton Jones situation. I'm not mad at Darnell Wright at all. Darnell is going to be – he's going to be a great yeah. player. And you can do a lot of things with those tackles. But, look, you win and you lose on the inside. And by the inside, I mean the literal inside, guards and centers. Um, so you get a guy like that who can get double team starter front side and back side, who can get guys on the right page. He's a smart guy, a tough guy, uh, and he's going to be the guy. There's something to me that's a, that's special about – having a center and a quarterback be together uh like their relationship and if they come in together um and they're both pac 12 guys it's cool you know can you elaborate for some of our uh viewers like why do you believe like it starts on the inside and then out can you give like schematic best passing that? offenses bro like what, what i think of just like uh a great passing off oh, say the drew Brees saints uh, you think about the guys they had on their offensive line and the guys that I remember were Carl Nix and Jari Evans, the guards. It's either you have the best center or you have two really good guards or you've got two tackles and you figure out the rest. So it's like you pick your, you pick which recipe you want, but like you keep the, the integrity, the inside's important, Ficky, because that's where the quarterback has to step up. Right. A tackle can get beat every play around the edge. But a smart quarterback and a stout guard and center, a, a group of guard and center, can keep the quarterback safe. And if you've got a guy like Caleb who can step up and out, you know, step up past the rush and out, then watch out. Yeah, and I think that's a great point. And I'm glad you broke that down. I think we saw what happens when you don't have that great center or great interior with Justin Fields and the habits it creates, right? You could see he was afraid to step up. And let's be real, I would be too, because there's a lot of times balls not even getting back to you, players getting like the center is getting blown up. You can't step up. So your eyes wander, you look outside and you take off. And so bad habits develop. So I think it really is important to step up in that pocket.